And I'm happy, you know, I, I always, you know, think that doing sessions with pastors and leaders is most important in my ministry. Because this will affect other people, you will train other people, help other people. Okay, now just now there was a question about a boy and a girl having sexual relationship and not married, right? Not married. Yeah, yeah. How can we handle that? Now, I'm answering in a general way because uh, you, you probably have people like that too in your church. So when we have people like that, how can we handle it? First, I will say I need to know the spiritual life of these people. How, you know, how they relate to God. Do they see that God is important? Did, did they believe that God, everything is in God's hand and no one can run away from Him? Now, if they don't believe that, then we need to first help them to realize that God is in control of everything. Now, trying to get closer. The reason is, because of the noise there, uh, it, it will pick up better if it's closer to me. Okay, now, so, first step, I will help the spiritual life. Now, remember yesterday I talked about a house? Were you there yesterday? Remember that talk about the house in the last session? Or oh, many of you were not there. That's a simple way I would tell people, you know, help people to understand how important it is for us to obey God and follow God and serve God. Uh, I just briefly, briefly explain it here now. On top of the house it says, everything is in God's hand. No one can run away from God. So, you know, I, I will talk to people, do you believe that God is in control of everything? Can you run away from God? No. And then the Bible verses you can write down is Psalm 24 1. Uh, Psalm 24 1. 24. 1. Verse 1. Now, we don't have time to go through this. I just give you the verses and you look it up at home. And then Revelation 2.23. Now this is the Bible in English. That God searches the heart of all people. That everything in the world belongs to the Lord. So I, I asked them, do you believe that everything is in God's hand? Yes. And do you want to be blessed by God? And then on the right side of this house, following and obeying God will bring blessings. And then down below, serving God will bring rewards. Serving God uh -huh. will bring rewards. So what it says here, every, you know, following and obeying God will bring blessings. The, the verses are Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. 
Matthew 6:33. Every time you say the words, you can say it twice. Matthew 6:33. Mstari wa 33. And then Psalm 34:10. Zaburi 34 mstari wa 10. Hizo ni ni verses ni 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 tsimba polo tsapota nga ipoint ya bo rembu. No donda nya sign and ku mwina mera no nyola tsi khabi. So ana kupatiza vitabu ambazo unaweza soma pale mahe. And then Genesis 39:2. Ah mwanzo 39 mbili. So say it twice every time. Mwanzo. Okay. Now these verses tell us that when we trust in God, love God, obey God, God will bless us. And then down down below is serving God will bring reward. Ah. Hapo chini nasema kwamba kumtumikie Mungu kutaleta kwaleta dawabu. Mark 9:41. Mariko 9 mstari wa 41. Say again. Mariko 9 mstari wa 41. So give a cup of cold water you get reward. So ukifanya kazi ya Mungu au oh, ukipeana kikombe cha maji utapata dawabu. And then Matthew 25:23. Matayo 25, 23. Matayo 25, mstari wa 23. The good and faithful servant. Mungu ni muhuduma wa uaminifu. Mtumishi katika uaminifu. And then Luke 6:38. Luka 6:38. Luka 6:38. Give and will be given to you. Peana nawe utapewa. Okay. Yes. And then on the left side of the house. Ah, uh, upande wa kusoto wa nyumba. When we sin and we don't have a close relationship with God, we will suffer. Tunako tena dambi na tusikuwa na usiano mzuri na mungu tuta ukumika. That there can be destruction. Destruction. Tuta kuwa na uarifu. And the Bible verse is Galatians 6, 8. Mistari ni kwamba ni ni wa Galatia 6, mistari wa nani? Let's say again, every time. Wa Galatia 6, mistari wa nani? And then John 5, 14. Yohana 10, mistari wa kumina ine. Don't sin, lest the worst thing will happen to you. Usifanye dami. Na... Mambo usifanye dhambi kwa sababu mambo mabaya yatafanyika kwako. Yohana 5:19. And then John 15:6. Yohana 15:6. Say again every time. Yohana 15:6 mstari wa 6. He who does not stay in the Lord will it will be like a branch that's thrown away into the fire. Yule ambaye hafanyi ama am Ule ambaye hamuamini Mungu atakuwa kama lile tawi ambalo litakatwa na kutupwa kwenye moto. And then down below on the left side. Pale chini katika mkono wa kushoto. Not serving God can bring destruction. No. Not serving God can bring destruction. Usipo mtumikia Mungu kwaleta madhara ama uharibifu. Matthew 25, 26 and 30. Matayo 25, 29 na 30. Matayo 25, mstari wa 26 na mstari wa 30. So the lazy servant that buried the gifts, they ha have to be thrown into the darkness. Kwamba wale ambao hawata mtumikia mungu watatukwa katika giza. What the servant? Wale ambao wanafanya kazi katika giza. And then Matthew 25, verse 45 and 46. Matayo 25, mustari wa 45 na 45 na 6. Iyo 25, mustari sasa ni wa 45 na 45 na 6. So those who don't do it to the little ones, do not do it to Christ and they will go into eternal punishment. Wala mbao hawafanyi kulingana na matenda ya kuhisto, wataenda katika uh, kadabu ya milele. Now, very important to say, we are not saved by doing good. We are saved by grace through faith when we trust in Jesus. But when we are saved, 
then we want to have a close relationship with God. Ya kwamba tunapookolewa ama tunapookoka tunatengeneza uhusiano mzuri na Mungu. And serve God. Na tunamtumikia Mungu. And then they will bless by God. Tutabarikiwa na Mungu. But then for people who follow God, don't follow God and then they don't bear fruit then there is something wrong with the faith. Wale watu ambao hawamtumikii Mungu na hawazai ama wale watu ambao wanamtumikia Mungu na hawazai matunda tuna shida na imani yao. So faith without works is dead. Matendo a imani pasipokuwa na matendo imekufa. That when people say I believe but they don't obey God, they don't follow God, they don't serve God. There's something wrong with the faith. Wale watu ambao wanasema kwamba tunaamini lakini hatumfuati Mungu, hatumtumikii Mungu, kuna shida na imani yetu. So the first thing I will help the two persons to realize we cannot run away from God. You know, remember the top of the house? Uh -huh. The top of the house. And then on the right side, if they trust in God and follow God, obey God, they will be blessed. Ya kwamba katika upande wa kulia wa nyumba ya kwamba kama watamtafuta Mungu na wamtumikie Mungu watabarikiwa. And then when they serve God, God will reward them. Wanapomtumikia Mungu, Mungu atawabariki. If they don't follow God, they don't have a close relationship with God and they don't serve God, they can face destruction. Kama uh, katika mkono wa kushoto kwamba ha, kama hawatamtumikia Mungu na kumtafuta Mungu watapata watapatwa na uharibifu. So I will have this teaching in a sermons, not just one sermon, but many sermons. Anasema kwamba amekuwa na mafundisho kama haya katika mikutano mingi. And I would talk to them too, you know, that do you believe that everything is in God's hand? Ataongea nao pia katika mkutano ama peke yake peke yao na uliza kwamba mnaamini katika Kristo. And we cannot run away from God. Na hatuwezi toroka kutoka katika utukufu wa Mungu. And now, when you have this lifestyle of having sex before marriage, unapokuwa na maisha haya ya kuwa kushiriki ngono kama haujaoleka ama kuoa, as Jesus said in John 5:14, Vile Yesu Kristo alisema katika Yohana Umesikia ilikuwa ngapi? 514. Yohana tarehe 14. Do not sin anymore lest the worst thing will happen to you. Usitende dhambi hata kidogo. Maana jambo baya litafanyika kwako. So if they think they can continue sin and then no consequence they are lying. To themselves. Ya kwamba wakifikia kwamba naweza tenda endelea kutenda dhambi na washione consequence ama ubaya katika maisha yao wanamdanganya Mungu. So I will tell them the the consequence of sin at the same time God loves you God wants you to repent. Atas ataambia kwamba katokana na zile dhambi ya kwamba Mungu anawapenda na Mungu anahitaji watubu. Now if they have the real life of Jesus they will know is wrong. Kama wako na maisha ya Kikristo watajua kwamba lile ambalo wanalitenda ni mbaya. They would want to repent. Watahitaji kutubu. Now if they won't, don't want it, repent. Kama hawatataka kutubu, I will ask them, does the Holy Spirit speak to you? Nitauliza kwamba Roho Mtakatifu anawanenea. Do you feel bad when you sin? Wewe unafikiri unasikia vibaya unapotenda dhambi? They might say, well, I feel bad but I have no strength. Anasema kwamba wanataka atakwambia kwamba nasikia vibaya lakini sina nguvu. Now many people continue sin. One reason is they don't think it's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter so they continue sin. Sa so, watu wengine wanapotenda dhambi hawaoni kwamba yani shibafida ngamba kwa leo yona ndio wataendelea tu katika dhambi. Another reason is that they think well, it's okay. I've asked God to forgive me. Then it's okay. Hey, we are not going to do that. We are going to do what we are going to do. Okay, but when you wake up, don't you start going to church? So when you do what you do, you do not go to church. Amen. So they might have all these, you know, false concepts or problems in the spiritual life. We are not going to go to church. We are 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 going to go to church. So we have to lift up the spiritual life of the people in the church so that they can realize this is serious sin. Now in Matthew 19 verses 6 to 9, 6 and 9. Matthew 19 verses 6 to 9, 6 and 9. 
Verse 6 and 9. 6 and 9. Yeah. Mustar yeah. So when you are married, you are no longer two, but one flesh. So what God has joined together, let no man separate. And then verse 9 says that whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality, and then he marries another person he has committed adultery and then also the woman has committed adultery aha kama utamtaliki mke wako ni kama tu hajatenda tendo la usherati wewe umetenda dhambi mbele za Mungu na hata mke ambaye ataenda nje ya ndoa atakuwa ametenda nini so it says here that when people, you know, they have sexual relationship and they are not in a marriage, they are committing adultery. Aha, ya kwamba unapo kuwa na ushiano wangono, we kati haubo katika ndoa, unatenda? Because sexual relationship is only for marriage. Ya kwamba tendo langono ni lile tu, ni naitajika na wala ambawa mewawani. So Jesus said, if these two persons who are married, wa maya yesu anasema kwamba kama hawa wini wa mewawana, and then, they separate and then marry another person. Ah, ya kwamba munatengana na unaenda kuwa mtu mungine. All these four people have committed adultery. Hawa watu wane wote wametenda nini? Umelewa kwa kweli. Ya kwamba kama umeowa ama umeoleka, wewe unatoka, unapata mungine, uya napata mungine, nini wane wote mumetenda dan. So that means that, that any kind of sexual relationship outside of marriage has committed adultery. Aha. Ah, tendo lolote la ngono ama ushiano wote inje na ndoa wewe umetenda nini? Okay. And then also in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16. Wa Korinzo wa kwanza mstari mlango wa 6 mstari wa 16. Wa Korinzo wa kwanza mlango wa 6 mstari wa 16. So he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in the body. Uh, yule ambaye anaunganika na kahaba ni yule ambaye akonae katika kimwili. So if someone has sex with the prostitute, he's already one with the person, with the prostitute. Aha, unapokuwa, unapounganika ama unakutana na kahaba kimwili, wewe pia umekuwa nini? So sexual relationship is not just for fun. Aha, tendo la ngono sio tu kwa mzaa. When there is sexual relationship not in a marriage, God doesn't like it. God hates it. Aha, Now you, now in the Old Testament, you you read about that when people committed adultery and then God slayed many people. Tenda tendo inje andoa mungu alikuwa na wakanawa ana wapanish ana wapatia kada. Now, God did not do that in the New Testament. Mungu afanyi hivyo katika agano li Egyptia. But then when Ananias and Sapphira, they lied to the church when they sold the house and then they kept some of the money and then they said they have given all the money to the church. Aha, kama Anania na Sapphira, walivyo kuwa katika kanisa, wali uza shamba, wakaleta fedha, wakadanganya, wameleta zote, kumbe zingino, wamefanya mnagani, wamezificha. And then God struck them. They were dead right away. Mungu akawagonga na wakakufa mara yoyo. So it tells us that God doesn't, you know, God hates sins. Yani inamtumanisha kwamba Mungu anachukia dhambi. Even though people commit adultery today, they don't die right away. It doesn't mean God doesn't hate them. Aha. Ya kwamba watu wanapotenda tendo la usherati saa hii na wasikufe saa hii haimaanishi kwamba Mungu haoni bali Mungu amewapatia muda wa kutubu. So God really hates adultery and premarital sex. Mungu anachukia kwenye inje andoa na kutenda engono pasipokuwa katika andoa. Now when we talk to these people, we want to talk with love at the same time. Now love and also the law. Unasikia pasta. Unapoonge na watu kama hao unaongelesha katika upendo na katika ukristo. That 
At the same time, we love, we say, God cares about you, I care about you, I want the best to happen to you. Aha. Asama kama unapo ongelezo na ambia, Yeshu wana wapenda na mimi pia na wapenda. Nataka muwe watu wa zuri katika kulisto. At the same time, sins will bring serious consequence and destruction to your life. Unambia kama katika yu hali, dhambi zitaleta uwaribifu mkubwa katika maisha yu. And then, how can you handle that problem? Sasa unaeza ishukulikia na mnagani yoshida. There are two ways. One way is that they don't see each other now until they get married. Aha. They can go to the church and see each other, but not outside the church. Because anytime they see each other, they have the temptation to have sex. Aha. Wakati wanapoonana hivi, wanakuwa na majaribu ya kuwa na ngono. And the other option is that they repent of the sin and then they get married. Aha, ya kwamba unawasaidia watubu katika zile dhambi ambazo wanazifanya na wangoje mbaka vile watakamu fanya mnagani? Now, if their adultery is known to the church, kama kuna hali ya usherati kanisani, they have to repent in front of the congregation. Aha, waje watubu mbele ya Hehe, ukipatikana umefanya usherati kanisani unaletwa hapa, unaanza kusema mwamu mbele na horowe iko no mbele ya umat. Because if people know that they have they have committed adultery and they still go to church, mhm. Ya kwamba watu wakijua walifanya dhambi na bado wanaingia tu kanisani kama kanisa na leo, people will think it's okay, you know, to go to church and then and then commit adultery. Watu wataona tu ni vizuri hata nikifanya usherati mimi nitaingia tu kanisani, so fulani alifanya na yako. So we can ask them to come in front of the church and say, we are sorry for the sins. I know that we know that we have offended God. Oh yes, unakuja mbele ya kanisa unasema kweli nimefanya dhambi na nimefanya makosa mbele ya Mungu naomba msamaha kanisa likiona. That we are truly sorry for our sins and we are willing to repent and turn away from the sin. Kwa sababu tumeishi vibaya, tunaomba msamaha kwa dhambi zetu na tunaenda kutubu mbele ya kanisa na mbele ya Mungu. And now this is one that how we can handle the people who are already in adultery. But what I want to say is very important to have preventive teaching. Like what I did yesterday. That we have teachings about sex, about marriage about holiness, about loving God and following God. Ya kwamba tunakuwa na mafundisho kuhusu ngono, kumpenda Kristo katika imani na mambo kadhalika kama yale ambayo yamehesabu. So that people understand how important it is to have a good relationship with God and have holiness. Ya kwamba watu waelewe ya kwamba kuwa na uhusiano na Mungu lazima tuwe na utakatifu. When they understand that also we teach them what to do if a guy approach you to have sex. Now first the guys have to realize when they have sex with the woman, it doesn't mean they gain something. Ya kwamba inataka wale vijana wagundue ama wajue ya kwamba wanapokuwa na ngono kama hawajaoleka hakuna dawabu ama zawadi yote ambao wanaipokea. What they get is only anger of God and punishment punishment of God. Kila ambacho wanakutana nacho ni hasira ya Mungu na kadhabu ya Mungu. At the same time the woman who is a man approaching for sex. Na wakati uh, wakati huo huo ambapo tunakuwa na mwanamke ambaye mume ana the, the woman has to understand that she is facing a temptation now. She might feel happy a man likes her. But she realized that when there is sex, that means this is, you know, this is a sin. And a serious sin. E utafreya kwa kwamba kumbe pia mimi na pendo na wanaume. Lakini atagundua ndani ya moyo kwa kwamba anapofanya lile tendo amekosa mbele ya Mungu. So when people understand that uh, even when they're young, I think in this country I've heard that even, you know, 13 years old have sex. <laughs> okay, shada. Ah, uh, anajua kwamba watu wakielewa hivyo na anasema kwamba amegundua katika hii nchi yetu watoto wa miaka 14 wamejua mambo ya ngo 
So we should have education when they are very young. So to kuwe na mafunzo wakati wangali wachan. Okay. Yeah. Have I answered the question? Wamejibu swali lako baba. Wamejibuka. Be satisfied. Now it's also very important for us to teach them that God is full of love and mercy. Ne vizuri pia nasi kuwafunza wajua kwamba mungu ni mwingi wa upendo na rehema. Having relationship with God, a good relationship with God is really enjoyable and bring all kinds of blessings. Kuwa na usiano mzuri na mungu ni wakupendeza sana na unaleta baraka kutoka kwa mungu. It will bring all kinds of blessings to the whole life. Ya kwamba mungu wanapa leta baraka zota katika maisha yetu. Instead of just a temporary good feeling in sex. Aha. Badala tu ya kuenda kusikia na mzuri katika ngoni. That we have a long, lifelong blessing from God. Ya kwamba kukiwa na usiano mzuri na mungu tutakuwa na mtiririko wa baraka katika maisha yetu. So it finally comes to the question. It finally comes to the question. Ehe, mwisho anakuja na swali. Do you believe that everything is in God's hand and no one can run away from him? Unaaminya kwamba kila kitu kiko mikononi mwa Mungu na hakuna anayeweza toroka Mungu? Yes. Now I totally believe everything is in God's hands. Therefore I dare not do anything to offend him. Aha, yeye kwake anaelewa kwamba kila kitu kiko katika mikononi mwa Mungu na hataki kufanya lolote ambalo linaweza mkasirisha Mungu. But at the same time I really enjoy God. I'm not, you know, being afraid of God. I'm enjoying God. Sasa yeye katika hiyo hali anafurahia. Anafurahia katika mko kuwa rafiki wa Mungu anafurahia. Okay. So that continue good relationship with God gives us motivation to overcome sins. Ah, anasema kwamba tukiwa na uhusiano mzuri na Mungu unatupatia mazingira mazuri ama kisingiti mzuri cha kuzuia kuingia katika dhambi. Now, all this, you know, how people can overcome this sin of sexuality depends on their relationship with God, how we build up the relationship with God in the congregation. Aha, jinzi, ama njia ambayo mtu anaweza jizuia kuingiana katika usinifu, ama katika dhambi za usinifu, ni kukua na usiano mzuri na mungu. Okay, now the question is, if someone is serving God, and it's also committing adultery at the same time and they refuse to listen to these teachings, what should we do? What I want to say is, if we allow this to happen, it's going to ruin the church and God will not be happy with the church at all and God will dislike the church. Anasema kwamba tunaporuhusu hili kuendelea tunaliharibu kanisa na Mungu hatafurahishwa na hilo kanisa. Ataleta uharibifu. First we have to have teaching. I would suggest you go back to the church first have the teaching about what I told you about this house. God is in control of everything. No one can run away. Anasema kwamba kila ambacho tunastahili kufanya turudi makanisani twende tufunze yale mafunzo ambayo alikuwa anafundisha kuhusu nyumba kwamba Mungu uh, uh, yeye ndiye mumiliki wa kila kitu and then loving God and obeying God it's you know will bring blessings kumpenda Mungu na kumtii Mungu kuleta baraka but when we sin or commit adultery it will bring destruction ya kwamba unapotenda uh, tendo la usinifu laleta uh, to that destruction to the person and also to the church. And also the teaching that good marriage is blessings. That when people love the Lord and then have a good marriage, then they are blessed. Both persons are blessed in the marriage. Ya kwamba watu ambao wanampenda Mungu na wako na uhusiano mzuri ama wako na ndoa mzuri inaleta nini? Baraka. But when people have, you know, sex activities with different people, different girls, and what happens is it will ruin their life and ruin their marriage. Anasema kwamba watu wanaposhiriki katika ngono ambayo ni ya kando kando wasichana ama wamama, hiyo inaleta uharibifu katika maisha yako na pia uharibifu katika kanisa. So when and then we can bring up the teaching of Matthew chapter 18. Ah, hapo tunaweza leta mafundisho ya Mathayo 18. 
When someone has sinned against you, talk to the person individually. If that person listens and repents, then we have restored this brother. But if this person doesn't repent, then we bring two or three to talk to him. When you are going to talk to someone, you are going to now, this talking may not be just a one time, it can be more than one time. We try to communicate with the person again and again. Now, after continue talking and the person still doesn't repent, then we have to tell the whole church. And if that person doesn't repent, he has to be driven away from the church. Amen. Unless he repents and then then he is restored. But even if he repents, he cannot serve God at this point. He has to go through a period of counseling and help to make sure that he really hates the sin of adultery. Uh -huh. Because people who live in adultery will affect the other people. The, the thinking will affect the other people. Uh -huh. He will close his eyes to adultery that he see among the people. And his example would like set an example for other people and they will follow his example. So we need to have teaching and counseling to help this person until he really hates sin and also he can avoid temptations. And now, why do I want to avoid any temptation? The motivations for me are the motivations for me are uh, motivation. First, God is full of love. God loves me very much. And my life is precious in the sight of God. I can be used by God to bless many people. If I sin, I would destroy God's plan. And also give a chance for people to Blaspheme God, speak against God. If I sin, not only can I not go into ministry, I can face the punishment of God. And I can lose my salvation. Why should I lose all this? Because of just a sexual pleasure. So when I realize God's blessings, I hate the sins because they are very destructive. Now God has given me a five steps to victory, which you can write down now. Five steps to victory. Uh, the first step is aware of any sin or any problems. Aware. Uh -huh. 
ufahamu uwe wa kufahamu njia moja ya dhambi for instance if i look at a beautiful woman and i'm attracted immediately i'm aware of it ha ya kwamba unapoangalia wanawake warembo na unajua au unawatamani uko aware kwamba hiyo ni dhambi and then, number two, destructive. This is destructive. Ya kwamba ni uwaribifu. Then I believe that when I sin, it's destructive to my life. Anaamini ya kwamba anapo tenda dhambi ni uwaribifu katika maisha yake. And number three, biblical, apply biblical teachings. Aha, kipengele chatatwa kwamba ana to apply, eh? Ana, ana mafundisho wa biblia. Anahusika katika mafundisho ya Biblia. The biblical teaching is that I will honor people and not to have adulterous thoughts. Atafundisha watu na waelekezwe kwamba wasikue na mawazo ya nini? Ya usinifu. And then number 4, pray to get strength. Pray. Kipengele cha nne kwamba uombe nguvu za Mungu. Number 5, choose to obey. Kitu kipengele cha tano kwamba uchague kutii. Now these five steps to victory actually is the way God uses to teach us not to sin. And then I copy it from God. Aha, Anna. I copy it from God. Because you notice when the Holy Spirit speaks to us. First he tells us you are about to sin. You, so we come, become aware of the sin. And then the Holy Spirit tells us this is bad, this is destructive. And then the Holy Spirit reminds us how to obey God. That's biblical teachings, how to obey God. And then the Holy Spirit reminds us to pray. Now for many people, the Holy Spirit keep talking and they keep rejecting the Holy Spirit. But when we say, yes, I choose to obey, God is happy and God will bless the person. So any time I notice any sinful thought in my mind, or any negative feelings, I immediately take care of it. I immediately take care of it. That's the key to victory over sin. Do not wait until you commit adultery to take care of it. Whenever anyone has any lustful thought, immediately take care of them. They will have victory over sins. So atakuona ushindi juu ya dhambi. Okay, so this is what we can teach. Now, all this teaching I've given here, I hope you understand these are long-term teachings. It's not just a one-time teaching. It's something we need to apply to our life every day. So for myself, anytime I notice any kind of sinful thought, immediately I take care of it. Uh -huh. And also, another key to overcome sin is to hate sins. Realizing that sins are very destructive. If I use this illustration, if this represent a person's life, if this represent a person's life, he commit a little sin. It doesn't mean only this part of his life is affected. 
Haimanisha kwamba hapa peke yake ndio pako pameharibiwa. It will affect all this whole life. Hapo panapotenda dhambi panaharibu maisha ya huyu mtu yote. Because in the book of James it says that when we break commandment we have broken all. Ya kwamba katika kitabu cha Yakobo inasema kwamba unapovunjika unapovunja sheria umevunja sheria moja umevunja zo For instance when we don't like someone when we don't like someone tuna aha kama haumpendi mtu it will affect our feelings our peace inside us unapokosa kumpenda mtu itakuharibu ama utakuwa na uharibu katika mwili wako wote hautakaa katika amani it will affect our relationship with that person itaharibu uhusiano wetu na mtu na huyo mtu it will affect our relationship with God. It will take away our strength. So it will affect every area in our life. So it will affect every area in our life. Now about people who continue to sin. And I hope you have the faith in God. If the person doesn't repent, we'll get him out of the church. Until he re repents. Kama mtu hataki kutubu, tunamtoa ije ya kanisa mpaka vile atakavyo tubu. And I want to say do not be afraid that your church will have less and less people. Aha, usiogope kwamba kanisa lako litabaki na watu wachache unapofukuza mtu mmoja. Because we are serving God, not people. Ha, tunamtumikia Mungu, hatutumikii watu. We want to bless people. Tunataka tubariki watu. But we are not trying to please people. When people sin, we don't try to please them. That, that we are not afraid to lose some people, even key people in the church. Wale watu ambao naona ni wazito kanisani huyu akitoka mpaka itikike wachilia watu waende kwa sababu wametenda dhambi. And the worst situation is if a pastor has adultery. Aha, na hiki kipengele ambacho mchungaji anashiriki katika ushinifu. We're not afraid to stop the pastor serving and if the person the pastor doesn't repent, we have to kick him out of the church. Amen. Anasema kwamba kama mchungaji anashiriki katika lile tendo la ushinifu, okay, mara mingi washirika wanaogopa kumfesi, ndio? Lakini anasema kwamba huyo pasta atimuliwe nje ya kanisa aende. Hata kama ni mchungaji afanye mara gani? Now, but we do all this in love. Lakini tunafanya hiyo hata katika upendo. At the same time with the firmness of the law. Na na uh, katika upande mwingine pia katika mwingi wa Mungu but in a gentle way lakini katika ile hali ya upole so i i hope you we all have this faith and confidence na anajua kwamba sisi wote tuko na hii imani na ujaziri okay yeah. uh, uh, I can uh, I can support uh, okay you have said about chasing the pastor outside the church eh? okay in some other churches eh? We have the pastors who are the overall, and these other people the can. Pastor, the pastor is the what? The pastor is the overall of the church. Eh? He's the, he has the powers in church, okay. and the members can fear uh, to face him, and they might not have that uh, way on how to chase him out of the church. What can we do? <laughs> okay. Now, if the pastor is continually sinning. Mm -hmm. The members can unite together because this is a responsibility of Christians that when we see there's someone is in sin, the Christians should talk to all the Christians, unite together and face this problem. Anasema kwamba kama ni mchungaji anaendelea kukaa katika dhambi, kanisa likae pamoja. Mumeogopa kumface lakini mkae pamoja na muanze kushughulikia hiyo hilo tatizo. Now, if the pastor doesn't repent and he said this church is mine, aha, mchungaji akusipotubu na sema hii kanisa ni yangu siwezi toka, mimi ndio nilianzisha. I would suggest the Christians just leave the church. All of them leave the church. Aha, anasema kwamba hata hata atafikia kwamba sisi kama washirika tutoke kanisani tuende tuache hapo huyo mtu. Because when the pastor is Committing adultery there. Ha ha! Kama mchungaji anafanya dambi pale. 
This is not a church of God. It is a house of Satan. <laughs> and I want to say this to you. Many people fall into sin because of lack of uh, peace or friendship. And they, uh, they don't feel good about themselves. Aha, uh -huh. come again. Many people fall into adultery because they need friendship. They need acceptance. They oh. need love. Watu wengi wana wana wanapatikana katika adultery ama usinifu kwa sababu wanataka tu kupendwa, wanataka tu kule upendo, yani uhusiano wao uwe pale, uwe mzuri mahala pale. Wanajikuta katika hiyo dhana. And they think that when they have sex they have some love from the other person. Aha, wanafikiria kwamba wanapokuwa na tendo la ngono wanakuwa na upendo kutoka kwa ule mtu mwingine. So we can have teaching on how we can feel good about ourselves and have good relationship with people. Aha, tunafundisha jinsi tunaweza sikia sisi wenyewe vizuri na tuwe na uhusiano mzuri na watu. So when people feel secure, they don't you know like like many girls they see oh, a guy likes me. He likes me. Oh, he likes me. Oh, I find meaning in life. They think that's everything in life because they are so lonely. Aha, ya kama watu wanapopendwa, wanaanza kufurahia wakisema Mungu ananipenda, Mungu ananipenda. Wanafikiria sasa maisha yao ndio imekuwa mzuri. Wamependwa. But if he if she feels good about herself, then she will she will say this man is just after my body. Aha, na kama utasikia vizuri uongozwe na Roho Mtakatifu utajua kwamba huyu mtu anahitaji tu kuutumia mwili wangu. Okay. Oh. So if people have peace and good relationship with God and love people and have good relationship with people, then he have more strength to face adultery. Aha, ya kwamba mtu anapokuwa na uhusiano mzuri na Mungu na kuwa na uhusiano mzuri na wanadamu pia, anaweza kuwa na nguvu za kukumbana na mambo ya uyesherati kanisani. 